Welcome back. Today we are at Insurance Auto Auctions Metro DC. They have Vets, Porsches, Mustangs, a Lotus Elise that doesn't look damaged at all. We have a massive amount of ground to cover, so let's get to it. I almost passed over this little Porsche here. Kind of a bland color in between two bigger cars, one of which is kind of the same color. The double take saved us this time. Getting a little closer, it's not as boring of a color as I originally thought. And this is the Carrera 4, which if I recall, has the same wider rear fenders that the turbo does. Looking at them here, yeah, that kind of looks like where my vents are on mine. Obviously it's a vert, spoiler is stuck up. The rear end of this car, which for obvious reasons is very important on Porsches, is intact. That wheel there kicked in just a little bit. I'm guessing that that happened from an undercarriage strike because if you look at the outside lip of the wheel there, I don't think there's anything that could have done that. Either that or the car itself bounced over something, hit a control arm and kicked it in. I couldn't see much underneath. I don't anticipate you guys will be able to either. But as far as I could tell, it looked okay. Porsche is always a little hard to tell. There's a lot of critical stuff back there. And when you're trying to ID that damage on the ground, it's just a little tough to see, which kind of sucks, but what are you gonna do about it? As for the inside, couple blown bags, no big deal. Hopefully it shows up in camera. This interior is not black. This is a very, very dark red. It actually pairs well with the exterior of the car. It is unfortunately an automatic. Let's see what we got as far as battery power here. The answer to that is absolutely nothing. So decent condition interior, wish it had power. Let's see what's going on up here. It looks like a fairly light damaged car, except somebody smarter than myself says that this is over. And by over, I assume he means the entire front frame rail assembly. To the naked eye, I definitely cannot see that, but I'm not gonna argue with whoever wrote that. I see a ton of these front end hit Porsches like this. And honestly, I kind of like buying them. Just the way that everything's put together up here, the whole tub structure, I find them personally fairly easy to work on. And yes, I suppose that whole part about not having an engine up here makes it just that much easier. You see the AC condenser there bent out that AC line, not quite broken, but shut. The actual whole assembly there doesn't move too much. Further up, the AC line is broken, but there's much more going on with this car than AC lines. Based on some of the markings on here, which yes, you definitely do have to replace these airbag sensors, but when you find stuff like this marked, it kind of shows that somebody may have been pushing the total of this car. Some totals are very obvious totals from the jump. You do not have to go mark small dollar parts like that. Even though this is a 2006, it's an older car. It's still a 911. They're still very valuable. They're not that easy to total. So I'm thinking somebody really didn't want this thing after it got in a wreck. While the cars that end up making it to salvage auction that fit that scenario generally pull a lot of money at salvage auction, they're also usually a really good opportunity to get in the car, rebuild it yourself without having to do too much crazy stuff. I'll have to do a little research because I truly don't know what this thing is going to go for, but just judging on what we see here, I think that's going to be an excellent rebuilder and it may be an excellent rebuilder for somebody who's doing one for the first time. Well, I did say Mustangs in the intro. Just another car that is really rough, man. We're not gonna start ripping metal off to pop the hood, but you can see down there through this not stock access hole that it does have aftermarket headers on it. It has an intake up there as well. Needless to say, this car is not going to start in its current configuration because the fuse box is smashed to bits. Now, as far as engine block type damage, it does look like a majority of this stayed to the right of the passenger side frame rail, which is good news for the engine. The cabin there took the brunt of it. It looks like right about here was the point of impact and it is gnarly. There is a lot of shredded up metal there. Definitely not the place you wanna find your front wheel though it does still have an intact brake caliper. So from a parts standpoint, that's something. It has, ooh, one Corsa. Maybe the other one's in the car. Maybe it's laying on a highway somewhere. Either way, it's not where we want it to be, which from a parts standpoint isn't great because they are a very expensive exhaust. It looks like we got some damage here to the driver rear quarter too. And by some damage, I mean on a normal car, that would be impressive. I'd be talking about how that was a hard hit. But when you have something like that up there, this just doesn't really seem to matter anymore, does it? I'm guessing there was some type of off-road excursion here, unless that's something that's got in there later. I really don't know, guys. Usually I'll pretty much touch anything, but, geez. Man, this is a parts Mustang if I've ever seen one. Now, is it a parts Mustang I would buy? 
Probably not. I typically like just paying a little more and getting a better quality car. A lot of times when you buy stuff like this, there's not enough in there to really justify the labor associated with taking the car apart. If I had to guess, I would say this car goes for $3,500 to $4,000. Might seem like a lot to some of you guys, but for the right person that may not have a lot of overhead and wants to take that thing apart, you might still be able to make some money on it. Easily one of the most recognizable things at Salvage Auction, these big STI wings. You can see them from a mile away. Being an ex-Subaru fanboy, you know I had to take a look at it. You guys may have heard me say in previous videos that I will not buy one of these if it's modified or hitting the front end hard. This one, though not completely stock, it has an aftermarket-ish SPT OEM option exhaust. It's hitting the door, it's hitting a way that makes it kind of difficult to fix. I would personally rather mess with the front end than having a car with a pillar bashed in like that. But either if I end up with this thing, it's getting shredded. Let's see if this hood pops. Either it's already popped or the latch is broken. We had to stick the camera down for a second and do the two-handed approach, but we got it open. Fortunately for us, this thing actually looks stock. To the best of my recollection, I don't think we've actually ran across an STI in one of these videos that I'd buy. This one even has the stock downpipe, which not only are they worth money, it means this thing probably wasn't modified and hacked up by some kid. Being that it's at our home lot, I think there's actually a pretty good chance we will buy this. To keep it simple, the damage on this car is all right there. There's not much to say. It's bashed in pretty good down there. The rocker section itself is actually torn. That's bashed in and pulled in pretty good. I have to assume all the driver's side stuff here was disassembled to get to that damage there. I don't see the mileage on this, so I am gonna have to go back and look on IEA.com and see what the deal is with this. Of all the Japanese imports we've left behind, of all the ones we've stopped messing with, the one that we still try to buy as many as possible of, this guy right here. Though they typically do not look like this. This thing is oof. There is a section of this that you would want good. I suppose it's this. So at least the front end wasn't completely engulfed by flames. Very clearly this was a fire brought on by a massive impact. No two ways about it. This is kind of one of those wrecks that just makes you cringe. Usually almost to a fault. I'm just running my mouth the entire video, but this thing makes you stop and take a look for a second. This is, whew. There's not a whole lot to say here. If you can get this thing dirt, dirt cheap for some parts you might need in the engine, maybe you can do something with it. If I had to guess, I would say somebody still ends up paying like a grand for this thing. Part of that is the craziness of the salvage market. Part of it is the fact that there are good engine parts in it. So at least this S2000 has something left to give to another car. I'm trying to gather something positive from that, but I mean, there's really not much there. I'm gonna fess up to you guys. I saw this from far away and thought it was a newer one. I saw the red sway bar, I saw the stripes, I saw the different color interior there. It looked like a pretty cool car. Then when I got close, I was very let down. When I saw, it was a 4.6. But then I looked a little left and saw that. When you're not rocking the Coyote, you gotta bring something special to the table, fortunately, this one does. You have Brembo's there. I'm not sure exactly which package on the 4.6s came with those or if somebody swapped them from say a newer performance pack. You also have American Muscle wheels which did not fare super well. In fact, one of them is right there. It also has or had Borla exhaust. When this car was actually in one piece, it was a very cool color combo. Dark blue, tan inside. You got some aftermarket suspension down there. I can't see much more than a sway bar, but still, somebody was paying attention to it. It's nice to see somebody actually put thought into the suspension on this. It didn't do them much good, but still. We still have one intact Borla muffler and one somewhat intact American Muscle wheel. This DC lot is full of Mustangs that are just absolutely annihilated. So far, both of the ones we've seen are absolutely destroyed. Hopefully we find something a little better at some point today. It does look like a majority of the damage stayed to the left side of the driver's frame rail. For reference, strut tower, supposed to be about right there. Not back there. It had a strut bar on it, which is ripped off the other side. This is rough. There's a spring wedged in there. That strut is at least two feet back. That's pretty crazy. At first glance, I did see that pipe down there and my immediate thought was turbo. Then I saw the BBK headers and I knew we only had one option left. And I think this hood's kind of just laying on there. Yes, that is the case. So that's where your strut bar used to attach. 
that's where the rest of it is. Now trying to hold this hood up with my head, we have a Paxton 2200 blower. It does look like the most important part of this car being the engine in this blower kit. Well, I shouldn't say kit because all of that stuff's gone. The actual head unit, it's intact. Even the bracket, which is important if you're putting this in a resto mod, looks like it's intact. So really not a bad car. The question is, what are people paying for four sixes? I genuinely do not know. We don't buy these ones whatsoever for parts reason. This one, even though it's cool, probably isn't gonna be the first time, but hey, maybe one of you guys can buy it. I don't think I need to elaborate on this, but don't buy it with the intent on fixing it. If you have a project car, maybe like an old Ford truck that this would be cool in, you can probably get it somewhat cheap. These Civic Type R guys are not having a good time. In my New York salvage auction trip, I saw a Civic Type R exactly like this. That's two lots in a row that I've seen a completely engulfed Civic Type R. That last one we had at least had some redeemable stuff on the rear end. This one, I don't know what this is good for. Other than scrap metal, I genuinely cannot see a use for this. Maybe you can get like a good crankshaft out of it. I don't know. One thing that people always seem to do, however, is find creative uses for salvage cars. So I have no doubt that somebody's gonna pay a few bucks for that thing. Well, I did just walk up on this thing from behind and from far away, the color, the wing, I thought it was a ZL1 1LE. It turns out that's not the case, but still, it's a pretty sick car. A pretty sick car that is unfortunately also wrapped up. The best I can tell under there, the engine is intact. Though the top of the intake manifold there does look like it has some damage. I have no clue if you're going to be able to see that. And while you might look at this thing and think, hey, we're not going to be able to see much. It's not a great car. I don't know that that's the case. This is another one of those classic hits that appears to be kind of high. At least as far as the lower frame rails go there. It doesn't look horrendous. If we go around to the other side, this may be where we run into some trouble. As best as I can tell though, it does not look that bad. I think this was just a really awkward high hit. The sunroof did get left open, though at least as long as it's been here, it's been sealed. On the inside there, passenger bag blown, driver bag blown, lower driver bag blown. The good news is the body parts that aren't mangled and bent in half, the paint's really nice on. The entire rear end of this car, super straight. Everything is isolated to the front end. While this definitely is not gonna be some walk in the park fix, we have seen much, much worse in this channel. Yes, that's right. Once again, I am ready to get roasted for knowing nothing about older cars. At the very least, I do know what this one is. I actually really like Fairlanes, and at some point, I would like to have a Coyote swapped one. Way back in the day, I seen the recall, I think on Fast and Loud, they maybe did a swapped white Fairlane. I liked it so much then, I said at some point I'm going to have to own one. It's a fire car that's taped shut so we can't even get in there. I'm going to stick my arm in there. Guys, at this point, you know more about this car than I do. I can't see anything. As far as the body, it looks really straight. This is by no means some crazy restoration, but it looks really good. This was somebody's baby and it really sucks to see it in this state. I can't tell if that glass is broken. It is broken. We're going to back away slowly so we don't even look at that the wrong way. Obviously, the top has burn marks, and that is a metal top, not vinyl, even though it kind of looked like that from far away. The back end also looks good. Just a really nice car. And fortunately, I think that this is going to be a good rebuilder from somebody. If you've been hunting around for a straight Fairlane chassis, and you want to do maybe, say, modern interior in it, this is probably a winner. In fact, I may know somebody looking for exactly that. Yes, it is me. We'll definitely have to give that one a hard look once we're back to the shop on IAA.com. Now this one. If I didn't see the badge on the front that said Imperial, I wouldn't know what it is. One thing I do know, that might be the sickest looking badge I've ever seen. Light blue exterior. Actually really cool looking interior. Car was originally white it looks like, unless that's just primer. Very unique looking interior. I mean very unique. The door panel is missing and rusty and the door doesn't stay open. So we're going to do the best we can to not get cut on that. There are a lot of aftermarket added on switches hanging out in this thing. So I don't really know that I want to go playing with stuff and trying to start this. Another really sick badge. In fact, this whole front end, the whole design of this car is just really, really cool. The hood was a bear to get up, but we did do it. And we are rewarded by somebody's presumably unfinished project. I don't think you can really complain though. You get a great looking chassis that is somewhat straight though we have to get back there. Just throw an LS in it. We don't need to bother with whatever that is. 
came down a little faster than I wanted, but it is 5,000 pounds. So the tire, seen better days. You're gonna need to replace that for sure. Regardless of the fact that I can't tell you much about this car, it is really cool, really cool. Still like the fair lane better. This thing's a little too big for my taste. Let's check out this roof and this is where things get bad. Wow. Well, everybody talks about rust issues on old cars. This one, she rusting. We're not gonna go peeling any of that off because we don't and won't own this, but that's a healthy layer of filler there. That roof is pretty well rusted out. You guys are gonna have to let me know if that's something that's common on these. And if we thought the other side had a lot of filler, wow. What I'm gathering here, nice car that had a fire, not that nice of a car, but probably fairly rare because I haven't seen that many. I'm gonna do some more research on both of these after I leave, but until then, let's keep moving. We have a Mustang here that at least at first glance does not look that bad. This person does have all kinds of weird stuff on it. We have the GT500 badge back there. It's not a GT500. I can tell you that much. We do have a pretty bad rear end hit. It's probably reserved for parts, but let's see what else is going on with it. Well, we have a question to answer, don't we? Typically cars with, how do we say this? Not great mods like that. And that, those cars aren't usually this. However, I'm gonna be very, very happy to be proven wrong. Now we're not off to a great start because behind that Cobra badge, looking past it, I don't see an intercooler. We have ourselves a very base, non-performance pack interior. Though it does have a pretty cool screen there. Don't know what that is, some type of aftermarket Tesla style screen. Let's stop playing, we know what we're here for. Press pause, guesses in the comments. This is your only warning, three, two, one. Well, damn. So because of the GT500 badges, because all this guy was doing on the exterior, I assumed it was a GT, I assumed it was a Coyote. It's not, I really don't know what's worse. Is it having the GT500 badges on the EcoBoost? At least we can kind of justify that because after all, it is turbo. It's not twin turbo, but it's turbo. So it's really only a 50% lie. Maybe he went looking for turbo badges and that's all I could find. This whole thing right there though, really. Being that it's not even a GT, I'm significantly less hyped on this car. So we're gonna make this quick. It has a really bad passenger rear hit. To the point that being an EcoBoost especially, I don't think it's worth it fixing it. That whole structure is massively in. That wheel is basically in the right spot. And you can see that there is nothing behind it for whew, almost two feet over there. The whole side of the car is significantly cocked up. If the car has a saving grace, it's that the front end is good. It has a lot of valuable front end parts, including the bumper, a hood with an aftermarket hood scoop. It has a nice pair of headlights. So if you're looking for one of these cars that needs a front end donor for a rebuild or something, or you need an EcoBoost for a project, as much as I hate to say it, might not be that bad. And as we back away from that thing, we run into this. This is a basic WX. We're spending no time on this at all. However, earlier I gave you the example of the perfect STI for us to buy. This is the opposite end of the spectrum. This Subaru is something that I would definitely not buy. Cheapo front mount intercooler, spray painted piping there. You can tell very easily just by looking at that stuff, it is not quality. Add to that the fact that it has cheesy tinted taillights and a sticker to let you know that it is definitely turbo. You go to the other side and it has a couple more stickers on it. We can't pop the hood, but you saw the intercooler. You have an exhaust here. It's clearly modified. Now, let me say there is absolutely nothing wrong with this exhaust. NVIDIA, great company. They make great products. However, I've said it before, for me, for leasey parts, modified Subarus, especially cheaply modified Subarus, nope. We all recognize these from a mile away. This one looks like a pretty decent car, but then again, I suppose compared to that one we saw earlier, anything was gonna look decent. Well, it looked pretty nice until we got to this side of it. So we are 0 for 2 on S2000s. Two really, really rough ones. At least this one didn't burst into flames. I don't suppose it's even worth talking about what it would take to fix this because nobody in their right mind is gonna do it. This is a parts car for sure. I didn't think it was gonna, but the hood actually still opens. I'm sure you can pick this up on camera, but that engine is not straight. Not straight at all. That triangle brace, which used to be somewhat square, is square no longer. Unlike the last one though, this one's gonna go for a little bit of money and hopefully... Anyway, these cars have become so rare and so expensive, even in the salvage world, that somebody's gonna pay good money for this. 
Now we've paid seven, eight, nine thousand, even five digits for these cars. This one's not going to be that kind of money. This one I'd say goes for forty-five hundred to five grand. Might sound like a lot, but somebody's going to look at that engine and think they can save it, which they very well may be able to. It's pretty common knowledge at this point that the S two thousand salvage market is out of control. A little over two years ago, that car was probably going to be a twenty-five hundred dollar car, maybe three thousand. I just had to whip the camera out as fast as possible once I realized what was speeding towards me. Out of my last three trips, I've seen two lots with R32s there. I suppose it makes sense that as they're becoming more common in the States, you're seeing more salvage auction. We are way, way down here in the thick of the lot. We have like a 10 plus minute walk to get back to where we need to go to finish this up. But I am super, super glad we got down here. I saw this car on the list before I got here. I didn't know where in the lot it was. I've kind of been keeping an eye out for it. Turn my head right and we just walked straight into it. Of course, the first thing I wanted to do, pop the hood. Judging by the pictures, I thought the hood was already popped. It turns out it is locked, so that is quite the bummer. The car is completely sealed up, so we can't even get in there to release it. Not quite what I was hoping for when we came across this car, but nonetheless, we can take a look at what we have. If you can't tell, we're down a wheel. That whole rocker assembly there, completely jacked up. This car overall, just pretty nasty. This front wheel right there, broken as well, though at least it still has a tire in the vicinity. I also want to say that that's not the right exhaust on there, though it's clearly what was on there when it was wrecked because, well, it's full of rocks. As part of the exclusive club of people who have bought a vet from auction that has rocks in the exhaust, I know how it feels. It sucks. I really wanted to see this car because it's right up our alley as far as parts cars go. Unfortunately, can't get aside, can't pop the hood. It's not a fixer. Don't really know what else we can do with it. That is very unfortunate. It's never fun when one of the cars that you were really looking forward to kind of turns out to be a bust at the lot. But it is certainly all part of the game. And there's a couple cars we have yet to see that I know for a fact are going to be anything but a bust. Just up the road from that Grand Sport is this RX-8. And this was not one of the cars I was referring to, but I am one of the rare few who likes these, especially the newer ones. I'm not super versed in RX-8, so I can't recall off the top of my head what this edition is called. I just know it's something fairly special. First off, I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, this paint color. It is like a red, pearl, orange type deal. It looks sick. And speaking of sick, this is what makes these cars really special. I recall when this edition first came out. It was right about when I was getting in the cars. I thought it was the coolest thing ever that they finally made an RX-8 that had a nice set of seats and some other special stuff. You still hear it today. These cars were not received well whatsoever. So when they came out with this one, it was the first RX-8 that really got some widespread love. It is a flood car, so we're not going to start it, but I wanted to see how far that water got up. It's kind of an older, dirty engine, so I can't really tell if there's a distinct water line. It's definitely going to have some failed electronics. Water got up at least high enough to ruin something because that window is down. There's no good reason whatsoever that window wouldn't have been put up if it worked. The perfect use case for that car? Swap it. The body's clean. It's a special edition. It has Recaros. You fix yourself a little water damage, put a real engine in it, and you have something special. The absolute last thing on planet Earth that I need is another project car. But maybe I'll keep an eye on it anyway. You know, just in case it goes for a deal. Okay, guys, we have made our way to the very end portion of this. I was saving the best for last. And added bonus, that R32 that I thought was leaving earlier, it turns out they just brought it up here. So we get to look at this thing as well. I think we're going to go Cayman R32 Elise. First things first, sick color. Absolutely awesome color. Porsche does make a couple awesome greens like this. I want to say this may be Viper green, maybe Signal green. As far as the rear end goes, it is in beautiful shape. I don't believe that this came from this car, so we'll go ahead and move it out of the way. The only real damage I see back here is this little side panel gone. I don't see any damage underneath of it. Everything looks intact exactly how it should be, so maybe it just popped off. Maybe it was removed for some other reason. Taking a better look on this side, I guess it's part of that whole side skirt assembly, which explains why it's gone. They pulled the side skirt because it was probably damaged up here. Just like that 997 we saw earlier in the episode. If I was fixing one of these, it would be a hit like this. This is exactly what I like in a damaged Porsche. And also just like the 997, it has a mark on there that says over and up. So who knows if it would ultimately be as easy as it looks to fix. This one though, 
does have a little ripped metal down there. The actual tub assembly down there is not that bad of a fix. Yes, it's structural, but there is a procedure to take all of this off and refit it. With lighter damage to the tub, you can kind of get away with just pulling this stuff. I also happen to know firsthand that if it's just this front panel that's damaged, if it's just this upper ring, you can replace those separately. This one would end up being a little more involved just because of that damage down there. It also has some very obvious suspension damage. That thing is holding on by a literal thread, and by thread, I do mean strut the sway bar but the control arms they are toast in addition to that presumably every cooler up here was damaged because well they're nowhere to be found unlike the car earlier this thing definitely has a long list of parts if you're wanting to fix it you need fenders bumper bumper supports all that bracketry you need every single cooler on the front end you need headlights which if these are the pdls headlights they are not cheap I just had to buy a set of those for a project I'm working on and it hurt to about the tune of $4,000. This is cabled shut there, so I can't exactly see if it's in good shape, but we do have that missing wheel in there. As far as the interior, beautiful. And that is a really, really cool touch. The matching green key fob. Well, not quite matching, but matching enough. Once again, no power. As someone who frequents these auctions way too much, I've learned that it's kind of just luck of the draw. Sometimes when we go, we see 10 cars and nine of them start. Sometimes we go see 25 cars and don't start a single one. People have mentioned it in the comments. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get like a portable jump pack and carry that around. If there's a car that I really wanna buy and really need to know if it sounds good, we're gonna have to start it. Other than the slightly disappointing fact that we can't start it, the interior, beautiful. Little dusty, no big deal. It will clean right up. I'm not really sure what the market on the non GT4 718s are, but I have to imagine that's gonna be one of the more expensive ones to sell. Great color, not that bad of damage. Overall, just nice car. I think it's gonna pull a decent amount of money. Next up, R32 GTST, and we have to talk about these, these sick wheels. Super cool heart-shaped design, and no, I am not kidding about that. I genuinely like them. Up in Connecticut, we saw a super, super rough R32. This one is anything but. The front bumper, not great. This one definitely had itself a pretty nice hit. I can't imagine that these actually hold up pretty well, so I think this one's going to be a pretty tough fix. But with how desirable these are and with the price they're going for, I would not be surprised if somebody did fix it. Or at the least, tube the front end, make it a drift car, something cool like that. We also have a big brake kit, front and rear. It says power stop on them, but they look an awful lot like 370Z Akabonos. But well, we have something there. Let's go up and make sure nothing's leaking out the front. Unfortunately, the hood is stuck shut. It is so kinked up that I don't even think pulling this latch is gonna do anything. The latch itself is stuck, wow. The radiator's aluminum, not a plastic one, so we don't have to worry about a post coming off and cracking it. There's no leaks underneath. I can't see any damage looking under it. Okay, well, we're gonna shut it right off because that feels like neutral. It's not neutral. I think it's stuck in gear or something. That is odd. The shifter felt a little weird, so I eased my foot off the clutch, and sure enough, the car did lurch a little bit. That said, it sounded really good when it was started, at least from the inside. There didn't seem to be any odd noise coming from the engine bay. If you're out for a project, if you need a new drift car, if you really want to get ambitious and fix one of those things, or if you have a front clip laying around, definitely good car. Oh, you're probably going to need the transmission as well. And last, but certainly, certainly, certainly not least, this Lotus Elise. When I saw this car on IA.com, I could not see any damage at all. Now that we're here, I see a little bit. We haven't got into it yet but that is all I can see. Now I did speak with the lot manager here. He was also kind of shocked that it was here. So I don't think it's us just missing something. I think this thing just got totaled for very little damage. Maybe due to parts availability, I honestly don't know. So now we just have to see if we lucked upon the greatest project Elise of all time, potentially a cheap track car for somebody, or there's something bigger going on here. First things first, we will go under the hood here. I suppose that is the hood prop right there, even though it's Kind of weird shaped. I don't know about that, guys. That has to be something else. As best I can recall, this is the first Elise I've been under the hood of. These cars have eluded me for a long time. I've always loved these. I think like most motorsports enthusiasts. To the naked eye, everything looks perfectly fine in the engine bay. Let's go ahead and move into the interior. Yeah, 
Everything looks pretty good in there as well. I could probably make another series. Oh, cramp. Oh, damn. Damn. Oh, shit. We all know nobody buys these things because they're spacious. These things are for one thing and one thing only. And I'll tell you what, it's not putting subwoofers in it. Your passenger had no leg room anyway and then you decided to stick a sub box down there. I am gonna take a second and look on their site to see if this was listed as running. The car is listed as non-running, it's stationary. So even given the minor damage here in the front, there may be something more going on. We're just not gonna be able to tell without getting it in the air. And if I wanna get that answer, I guess I'm gonna have to buy this thing. I don't know that that's gonna happen because I can barely fit in it, though it would be the perfect K-Swap car. So... <sighs> There's no way I can buy that. There's simply no way. I kind of thought I was saving a really cool car for last and I was gonna get all hyped up about it and be like, yeah, I gotta buy one one day. But it turns out I'm finishing off this video by learning that I can never own a Lotus, which kind of sucks. Now, maybe we have some four foot nine viewers that can actually get into this thing. So I will take one more quick look around it. The damage is just not bad. This car has to be total from something else and the full picture must have just got lost in translation. Even non-running, it really feels like this car should not be sitting here. And while there definitely have been some too good to be true deals that have turned out great for me, I'm sure you guys all know the old saying. I'm just walking around this thing again because I refuse to accept that I'm not gonna see something else wrong with it. It's just too nice. And we're two laps around the car and I already wanna own one again. I don't really care how hard it is to get into it. It's such a nice looking car. I'm feeling up into the grill because that's where the radiator is. The fans are intact. I really don't know on this one. This is tough. It is very rare that I get stumped at salvage auction. The Lotus has done it. You guys are going to have to tell me what's going on with that thing because you've seen exactly what I've seen. Are front bumpers for those cars just absolutely not available? Can you not buy them? If you put a hole in your front bumper and run it through insurance, is it totaled? I'm sure you can buy one used, but insurance companies may not want to do that. So put it in the comments and let me know what you think's going on with that. If you had the chance to buy that car from auction, which you do at IAA.com, what would you do to it? Would you just try to get it running? Or like me, if I could fit in it, would you go crazy? Would you do a turbo K swap? Would you do something cool? Would you make up your own swap? Would you do something that's never been done before? Guys, this is one more salvage auction trip in the books. You know we'll be back with another one soon. I have a blast every time. I love sharing it with you guys, so we are definitely not stopping. Of course, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.